everyone so this video is going to be about understanding the medullary syndromes and we will start the story by understanding the transverse section of medulla at the level of inferior olivary nucleus so we have some the lateral structures and we have paramedian or the median structures so we have two syndrome the lateral medullary syndrome wallenberg syndrome or the medial medullary syndrome the important one is the lateral medullary syndrome so we will start by understanding the lateral structures first so this part okay this is the peduncle that connects the medulla to the cerebellum and this is the inferior cerebellar peduncle the three nucleus laterally present we need to remember are uh, here you can see dorsal nucleus of vagus okay the second nucleus is vestibular nucleus and the third nucleus is spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve the three important nucleus in the dorsolateral part of the medulla are dorsal nucleus of vagus, the vestibular nucleus and spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. Remember dorsal nucleus of vagus along with nucleus ambiguous and nucleus structor solitarius forms the vagus nerve. The other structures to remember are reticular formation, a part of reticular activating system and the lateral spinothalamic tract. So the dorsal lateral part has manifestation because of these six structures. The inferior cerebellar peduncle, the dorsal nucleus of vagus, the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve, reticular formation, lateral spinothalamic tract and the vagus nerve. Let's start by understanding the Wallenberg syndrome and then go on understanding the medial part. So the first manifestation because of involvement of the inferior cerebellar peduncle is ipsilateral ataxia that patient has. So and the second uh, symptom is because of the lateral spinothalamic tract. Uh, involvement of lateral spinothalamic tract will lead to contralateral pain and temperature sensation loss in the half of the body. The third manifestation because of reticular formation involvement is sympathetic involvement leading to Horner's syndrome in the patient. The fourth manifestation because of involvement of vestibular nuclei will be giddiness because of loss of balance. The fifth is because of involvement of spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and it will be ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature sensation over half of the face. And the sixth and the last because of involvement of vagus nerve along with the nucleus ambiguous, nucleus tractus solitarius manifest as uh, paralysis of the palate, palatine muscles, the pharyngeal muscle and the laryngeal muscles. So the patient of dorsolateral syndrome or the Wallenberg syndrome has these six manifestations. Let's revise it. So the patient because of involvement of the cerebellar peduncle will have ipsilateral ataxia, contralateral loss and pain and temperature sensation in trunk and limb because of lateral spinothalamic tract, Horner's syndrome because of involvement of reticular formation, giddiness because of vestibular nuclei, ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature sensation over the face because of involvement of uh, spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve, ipsilateral paralysis of muscle of palate, pharynx, larynx due to involvement of nucleus ambiguous. And this is what is known as the lateral medullary syndrome, Wallenberg syndrome. And this Wallenberg syndrome or lateral medullary syndrome affects the dorsolateral part of medulla. And this dorsolateral part of medulla is supplied by pica, that is posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Remember, uh, involvement of pica leads to dysphagia, whereas involvement of anterior inferior cerebellar artery leads to uh, facial involvement facial palsy so this was about the lateral medullary syndrome let's try to understand the medial medullary syndrome which is easier let's start by understanding the structure so this is a hypoglossal nucleus and this is the hypoglossal nerve emerging lateral to the or lateral to the arcuate nucleus these are the medial longitudinal fasciculus, the tectospinal tract, the medial lemniscus, that is the continuation of the posterior, posterior spinothalamic tract fibers above the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus. This is the corticospinal tract, also the pyramid. So the manifestation, the important manifestation are because of three structures, the corticospinal tract, hypoglossal nucleus and the medial lemniscus. Because of involvement of pyramid or the corticospinal tract, the patient will have contralateral hemiplegia. Because of involvement of hypoglossal nerve, it will be ipsilateral paralysis and atrophy of tongue. Whereas involvement of the medial lemniscus will lead to contralateral loss of position and vibration sense. And this is one that is known as medial medullary syndrome or serine anterior bulbar syndrome. So this was a bit about uh, understanding of the medullary syndrome. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.